Uh, good evening and welcome to the first episode of Raw Chop TV, hosted by myself and Dan. Good evening, Dan. Evening, Stephen. And how, how are you? What? I'm fine, thank you. In devices, it's fine at the moment. Rain stopped, which is good. And over your way? Um, pretty much the same. It's got a bit sticky though. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're both in Wiltshire, which is probably the best county in England. I think the idea for Road Shock TV came about when? Um, I think it came from our last com last chat on Blab in April. Um, yeah. uh, after which you said, "Why don't we make this monthly thing?" And uh, my initial reaction was, "Oh my God, no." <laughs> um, but I actually sat down and thought about it and um, ran it past a couple of people and they all and showed them the video of the last blab and right. they all kind of went, go for it. So it, yeah, you so know what it's like. Definitely. Sometimes these little ideas sort of take root and you never know quite what's going to happen. I mean, in fact, really, that's pretty much a story of elements for life. But um, I think it's just a case of give something a try have a have a bit yeah. of fun while we do it and um yeah see where we go really so um yeah I mean, that's, that, that's the whole thing isn't it to make uh to be informative yet fun yeah so absolutely we've got a mix of things coming up in the next 30 minutes or so anything can happen and probably will <laughs> uh, we've, we've spent the day chatting to each other and uh working out done worked out a program and then we put things in place and hopefully uh as we go along today uh, everything's going to get work fine. So let's go with the first question, which is a question everybody asks you, Dan, and I'm going to ask it again. What is raw chocolate? Um, and it is a really good question because often people just give you a vacant look when you say, oh, I do raw chocolate, I make raw chocolate, or I've got a raw chocolate business, and there's just sort of this sort of like, uh? Um, and as far as I'm concerned, and I think as far as the raw chocolate industry such as it is, is concerned, it, it comes down to two things. Um, and that's the, the cacao that you use, um, so the, the chocolate, um, and then the way you process that cacao. Um, so the first aspect with the, the actual cacao itself, it's about using uh, obviously very good quality, high quality um, cacao. Um, but the critical thing here is that um, after the beans have been dried and fermented lightly, um, the, with, with raw chocolate, the beans aren't roasted. And oh, okay. what happens normally with raw cho with chocolate is the beans are roasted. Um, and this really draws out that astringent bitterness that you get in chocolate. And the reason that a lot of people go, I don't like raw chocolate, dark chocolate, is that real astringent ugh, bitterness. Yep. Yep. And it's the roasting which really draws that out. Um, so with raw chocolate, the cacao we use, the beans we use, the, they're never roasted. Um, so you don't ever get the same level of bitterness. So you could have a, for example, an 80% dark chocolate and an 80% raw chocolate. And the raw chocolate just won't be as bitter it, because it hasn't been roasted. The other benefit of not roasting, as well as the the less bitterness to the flavour, is that you're retaining more in the nutrients. Um, and cacao is fantastically packed with nutrients. Um, then, when the bit after that process, the the method of extracting the butter and the powder, splitting the mm -hmm. bean into two, conventionally is done under really high temperatures and pressures. Um, and again, so it's more high temperatures, destroying more nutrients. So with raw chocolate. Um, that processing is done under low temperatures. Um, there's a, a couple of different figures that people say for keeping things raw. Yep. Um, one of them is 47 degrees Celsius. Some people say 50 degrees Celsius. I've heard people say 45, but it's it's that sort of region. Yep. Um, and the the idea of that temperature is keeping it low is you're not destroying the, the enzymes in particular, the enzymes and the other nutrients that are in the in the, the food. So in this case, the cacao, um, which is obviously better for us. Um, if you're not destroying the enzymes, not destroying the nutrients, then there's more goodness in what you're eating to absorb into your body. Um, so, for example, the cacao we use, um, it's stone ground under low temperatures, um, again, keeping it nice and low under that 47 degrees, which means that you're getting uh, more nutrients in the, in the final product. Then when you make your chocolate, so this is leading into the second aspect, when okay. you make your chocolate, um, 
there's various processes, various ways of doing it. But um, one of the when you're the ingredients you use, you conventionally they'll use uh, refined sugars, which have got a very high GI rating, um, which is the glycemic index. So that's the the way your body metabolizes the the sugars, mm -hmm. um, and if something's got a really high GI, you get that real energy peak, and then you Spike. get a yeah. trough afterwards. So you get that real crash from high sugar things. Um, so with raw chocolate, you'll use a, a, a lower GI sweetener. So usually this will be something like, um, there's all sorts of things that can be used. So it's the main thing is it's not refined cane sugar because they're the things which really get high up. Um, so we use um, something called Sweet Freedom, which is um, a small UK company that makes that. Um, it's made from apples, carob, and grapes. So it's uh, so Na fruit natural sugars. sugars. Yeah, natural sugars. Um, and even though it's from fruit, it's not largely fructose. It's actually mainly glucose, which is a whole other episode, really. <laughs> um, so you're you're not getting the peaks and troughs of energy, um, and then you don't use any sort of any additional packers or bulkers, so none of this hydrogenate, hydro, hydrogenated fats and all this sort of stuff. You're basically keeping things as pure and as simple, so you're not adulterating it. So you're getting maximum nutrients, and then you're not destroying, sort of abusing it with all sorts of things. So typically, raw chocolate will be have no dairy, have no uh, soya, no wheat or gluten, um, no refined sugars. Um, so it's it's just full of natural ingredients. So I certainly think it's better for you. I certainly think it tastes a hell of a lot better than normal chocolate. Um, and I must admit, I find it very hard to eat normal chocolate now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it's, it is the taste, isn't it? Because the taste is, is somewhat, I mean, we're all in the UK brought up on Cadbury's and Bourneville and yeah. Terry's. Uh, and Bob, if you could drop in what sort of an American chocolate, we can compare it to as well. Those are very rich and creamy. And the, the situation there is that the, the Cacao beans that have been cooked at 200 degrees, not the 50 degrees you were to 40 degrees you were talking about. Yeah, I mean, the, there's the roasting process initially, which is obviously really high temperatures. And then commercially, when they extract the butter and powder, this is done at really high temperatures. Typically, it can be over 200 degrees and it's often at high pressure as well. And it's just so it's done on really large scale um, because they have to produce huge amounts of it. Um, so it's just. Yeah, it's the difference between a, a mass-produced product and a smaller, more artisan product that is closer to the original source, I suppose, is one way of looking at it. Right. And hence, uh, your slogan, where there's chocolate, there's hope, because it's healthy, isn't it? Oh, well, that's one of them. That's that one there. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> well, there's Where's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, it's... Yeah, I mean, we, we seem to have several slogans. That's one of them. Another one is actually spreading the raw chocolate love. And that's really one of the things that we love to do. Um, and that's what, as a, as a company and what me and my wife, we very much like to do is just trying to spread the, the love of raw chocolate and get people away from highly processed, um, sort of mass produced products to something that's smaller produced for, we've got better nutrient profiles in and tastes better. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've got to agree with that. I mean, I'm a, an avid fan of your know, wide range of chocolate products uh, because you start off with, the, well, you still have the, the chocolate making kit, don't you? So you can make your own yeah. well, product plan. Uh, Brilliant. How about that? It's almost like we have this planned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Well, yeah, what's in the chocolate making kit? Okay, making so, your own chocolate. Right. So basically, this is. I was talking about the cacao butter and the cacao powder. So what you've got here is cacao butter and cacao powder. So basically you take the, the beans, you crush them, the fat that gets extracted out, that's your cacao butter or commonly known as cocoa butter, and then the residue is ground into a powder, which is cocoa powder or cacao powder. You then mix those, melt, melt that, add some of that, put in something sweet. We use the sweet freedom. Okay. Mix it together put it in a mold, put it in the fridge, enjoy it. And it is as easy as that. It really is as easy as that. And it's, it, yeah, I, I don't defy anybody not to be able to make it. Is, is it time for a recipe, you think? <laughs> I think we probably could do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just, just to show how easy it is, um, we'll bring Dan's words to life. 
Bob's comments there, yum, and uh, Melody as well. We we can ag agree with you. I can can attest that uh, that is exactly how you do it. Uh, we then get a cut. And we've done, made the chocolate using the, that particular kit uh, many times over the years, and it's not only are you actually making the chocolate, but after a short while you get to enjoy it as well and uh, we'll give a link to the recipe so you can replay it later for those of who are watching the replay and saw nothing for a couple of minutes our apologies uh, the link will be here uh, on the replay just press the link will be a link to the intro and to the, uh, the recipe video and you can take a look at those separately on uh, on Dan's channel on YouTube uh, you well, it looks well, like you enjoy enjoy making that yeah, absolutely. One thing I always sort of point out to people is that it takes 20, 30 minutes, you're putting it in the fridge, and then you've got to wait a couple of hours, but you get to lick the bowl out. You see? Ah, and it's, it's cooking. Exactly. And it's quite it's quite interesting because we we sort of a lot quite often um some parents will buy a kit to make with their children. And um Sort of, we, we get reports back of the kids putting them in the fridge and then having to wait and they're trying to open the fridge door to see if they're ready and the mums are going, no, 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 wait, but look, here's the bowl. So it is, and that's one of the things, it's fun to do. It really is a fun thing to do. It's easy, it's, um, it's fun. And yeah, I mean, kids love doing things, love making things. And people say, like I said earlier, people who don't like, people don't like dark chocolate often, but often if people don't like dark chocolate, they will love raw chocolate. And in fact, Paula, my wife, she's she's a, a case in point. She used to eat milk chocolate day in, day out. And now she just can't touch it. And she eats raw chocolate all the time. And she would never have believed it. But it's, yeah. yeah. This is, this is going to be a strange thing to say. But when you eat dark chocolate, you don't eat as much as you do with the milk chocolate. Or at least I found that, Angelica's found that too. <laughs> because it is more satisfying. You, you don't. If you can eat a full bar or a full two yummy scrummies, then <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely. And I think one of the reasons for that is probably that when people are eating a conventional chocolate, whether it's a conventional milk chocolate or even a dark chocolate to some degree, compared to a raw chocolate, to some degree they're feeding a sugar habit, um, and it's it's not so much about actually. You, you're not in really getting the goodness from the chocolate from the cacao but you sort of psychologically you think you should be and so, but you're feeding this sugar addiction unconsciously for most people um, yeah. and then as you and yeah you if you wean yourself off um it's it's you you change change your eating habits in fact i think as um, Roland said earlier about sort of with tea when you have tea and a, a sugar in your tea and then you first have it without it's terrible but over time you, your taste change and then someone gives you a cup of tea with some sugar in and it's like oh so, <laughs> um yeah. and yeah i mean and that's the thing with, the, with when you make it yourself what often happens people put quite a bit of sweetener in there whether it's the sweet freedom whether it's honey or whatever they put quite a bit in because they're they're used to something sweet and over over the weeks and months they put a lot less in and sort of six months later there's probably or often they sort of even half the amount of sweetener they put in 
Well, that, that's it. If, you, if you're making your own recipe, you make the first one. And even as a man, you would read the instructions, <laughs> follow them step by step. And at the end of it, you, you get the chocolates. And then you think, what would happen if, as you said, <laughs> reduce the sweet freedom mm. and add, if, if you're not allergic to nuts, add some nuts. Anything, you know, you uh, can use that. To do, it's the basis for, for a lot of different products, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the, that that basic recipe that was in the video is is just, it's, like I say, it's our no-fail recipe, and I don't think I've heard anyone not make chocolate as a result. It is, there's no excuses. Um, but it, like I say, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good base. Once people have got the hang of that, and it only takes a couple of batches, and you, you've, you've got it mastered, and then it sort of start experimenting, putting fillings in, putting different things in, so sort of, sort of essential oil, sort of maybe a rose essential oil, a couple of drops of that to give you a nice flavoured chocolate. Um, and then you can start really branching out and start doing cakes and wow, mousses and all sorts of things. And I, I, I would love to see a cake recipe on the next show. Uh, yeah, well, funny enough, I was, I was thinking about this and I, I've, I've kind of set myself a challenge here of having to produce a video for a recipe each episode. Okay. Um, I think a cake might be a little bit way down the line. I need to get okay. I need to well, get that well, next editing first. <laughs> We'll build up to it. Uh, <laughs> and for the next show, if, if you all bring your raw chocolate kits along, you can do it as we do it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, men don't normally read instructions, uh, but in the case of chocolate, I did. Because I wanted to get this <laughs> and step by step, and the instructions were very straightforward, and everything worked and <laughs> continues to work. Because you, 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 you then went on to take the... Uh, the chocolate making kit and then went on to another product as well which we're going to mention we've got to mention your ice cream at least uh, you want it every show um yeah um uh, i mean yeah we, we we make all sorts of bits and pieces and um, yummy scrummy is kind of called a raw chocolate brownie which is the closest you can get to describe it um and it's fruits nuts and lots of raw chocolate um yeah but it's not a brownie. Again, there's no wheat, there's no dairy, it's not cooked. Um, but yeah, I kind of it kind of says what it is. Um, it does, course, the, name, right. the name says it. <laughs> um, and uh, of course, I mean, this is we, when we talk about chocolate and we talk about making chocolate at home. You now own uh, your own chocolate factory. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Um, again, much like this thing we're doing now raw chalk tv it sort of came out of nowhere we started making chocolate and we started doing bits and pieces and it started getting a bit more successful and busy and busier and busier and our house got taken over and over and over and yeah. we ended up with boxes everywhere and the next thing is it's like uh we we need to do something about this and luckily we found a a, a farm building a few miles down the road and spent quite a bit of time and money converting it into what we need and we've got this fabulous chocolate venture in a place that's affectionately known as woolly wonka land because it's a woolly green um so <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it kind of it kind of lent itself to being called that um yeah. but yeah it's great it's um uh, it's just sort of allowed us to start sort of looking at where we go with things, but yeah, onwards and upwards, I say. Yeah. So, so when when you're talking about raw chocolate, you're talking about it from eating it, but also from making raw chocolate products. Um, yeah. So yeah. you know, and, and I, I think that I think this is probably a good thing to say here. So one of the one of my real passions is, like I say, spreading the raw chocolate love and raw choc TV wherever this may go is about that it's about getting people engaged with raw chocolate getting people to understand what it is um and yeah getting people to get involved as much as possible um and just really sort of yeah spread the word of um the the wonders of raw chocolate because it's an amazing thing it really is an amazing thing and um i almost guarantee to anybody you never know quite where your life might go in, indeed, and for for those of you who don't know about it, would you like to explain? Hopefully, this will. Right, hang on, I knew something would go wrong. I'm going to try again. I'm not sure what you're doing now. Right, <laughs> right. Would you explain about the raw chocolate lovers group 
on Facebook. I've just put the link in. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, this is like, like something I, a random idea a couple of years ago. I, I started a group on Facebook called the Raw Chocolate Lovers. Um, and again, it's just a space for anyone who's got an interest in raw chocolate or a love of raw chocolate um, to just come and join. Um, it's I'm still trying to figure out how to run a Facebook group. Um, and I also, I, I don't want it to be me running it. I want it to, yeah. Yeah. I want it to, it's that community thing, I guess, isn't mm -hmm. it? So I, it's, people come in, people share recipes. When people are doing workshops and courses, they share details there. Um, and if people are running competitions and that sort of thing. So it's, a, it's sort, of a, sort of an information resource at the moment. Um, and obviously free to, free to join. And um, yeah, oh Roland, you can add admins. I well, I've I've got admins added. Um, I just, just I don't really know what to do with the group. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's there as a resource. If people go in there, join the the, the the group, and they have a question, then they can ask yeah. you, and you you and Paul will answer it. And not uh, just yeah, us. I mean, well. We get some great responses from the members of the. I mean, there's just over yeah. a thousand people who are members of the group now, and. Um, as with most things on Facebook, sort of maybe 10 percent are active. Um, yeah. And yeah, but we get sort of all sorts of people coming in with sort of questions and ideas and yeah, people sharing their, their ideas and they're absolutely writing recipes, videos, people. I, I try and encourage people to share as much as possible. That's what it's about for me. Yeah, yeah so it's basically there's no, no magic recipe for a group. It just happens, doesn't it? The community comes together yeah. Uh, yeah. over time usually with a little bit of cajoling. So that's the, the group. We've posted a link to that. Let me go back to uh, the script just to make sure that we're sort of following it. Right, okay. Now, if you have any questions for uh, for Dan about raw chocolate, then please ask them as we're going along. Uh, we're going to go for another... It was, it was some photos. Yes, some photos in. Um, <laughs> we will be recording for about another 10 minutes, and then we'll go off there, and you can join us uh, if, if you wish. Right, okay. Are you, um, are you volunteering to go to the North Pole, Roland? <laughs> right. Well, the, hang, there you go. The bar just <laughs> um, it's, it's, you've become transatlantic now. Um, you're members from the, the USA um, and good friends as well. Right. Uh, sorry about that. Just checking. Right. Um, Okay, now, do you have, well, what happens next on the show? Um, well, um, if anybody wants to come on screen and share their ideas or just add a comment or anything like that, um, you're more than welcome to, or post questions. Um, so, but if not, um, I've, I've got a couple of things up our sleeve. So, um, right, okay. Um, but you should join our group. Uh, definitely, whatever it is, post a link. No, no, I, I can heartily recommend it. Uh, it's a great place to learn about uh, live video chats. Ah, um, okay, cool. And uh, it's, remiss, it's very good of Barbara to mention it. And uh, you can get hints and tips in there. And that's how that's the group that I'm using to, to learn all about this video <laughs> uh, arena, which we're in. Okay, question from Roland. <laughs> How many, and I'll read it out. It's just a, uh, on this question, and how many calories are in raw chocolate compared to standard milk chocolate? Um, if we take I, well, uh, <laughs> actually, Jackie, you you've kind of said what I was thinking. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> um, but I know I know a lot of people do care, um, rightly or wrongly. Um, it's, to be honest, it's very difficult to actually compare like for like, um, certainly on a question like that, because you've got so many variations on okay. types of bar, how they're made, how big they are. Um, if you're making, say, raw chocolate yourself, it depends how much of the sweetener you're putting in and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. But probably on a calorie level, compared to sort of a, a milk chocolate, I would say it would be less because you've, with a milk chocolate, you've got the milk and there's probably some other fats, vegetable fats in there as well. So those are going to be putting up the calorie levels. Whereas with a raw chocolate, you you won't have those. Um, you'll be having the cacao butter and the cacao powder and then sort of. So I, without sort of looking exactly, it's difficult to say, but they're either going to be comparable or less. But I mean, as Jackie has put in the comments, it's about nutrition and the 
what's in the chocolate um, and then how your body metabolizes the chocolate. So, um, and that's the, the big difference between the two. But good question. Yeah. If, if, <laughs> just a hypothesis here. If we could switch people from eating milk chocolate to a, just stop it overnight, we stop people eating it, and then we say, right, okay, you can eat. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? I'm not sure, but we'll go with it. <laughs> If they if they ate raw chocolate, and if we had all had to eat raw chocolate instead of milk chocolate, mm -hmm. all right, okay. At that point, with that question, I shall bring Barb in. Okay, join us. Okay. Hey. Hello, Barb. Hey. Good evening, Barb. I'm a chocolate lover. <laughs> so. That's what I like to hear. Are but you a raw he... chocolate lover? Oh, I, I, uh, yeah. Good. And, <laughs> the thing is, though, I haven't thought about doing anything myself. And I live in an environment where there's all these fresh berries, like raspberries mm -hmm. and blackberries and that. So with your recipe, can I use that for dipping? Um, yeah, you can do. Um, and what you, um, yeah, I mean, it depends how firm the berries are. Because if they're, if they're still quite firm, you can certainly dip them in and then put them on a uh, a baking tray um, and, it'll harden. And, and then put them in the fridge yeah i mean uh, the okay. one thing i will say at this point is that recipe the chocolate you make isn't tempered um and basically very very quickly that means it's it's will melt easier so when you bring them out to the fridge after they've set um and they're at room temperature they will start to soften um so if you're right someone who's quite, um oh. not necessarily right away but they will start to soften sort of reasonably quickly it depends on how hot your ambient temperature is um but certainly if you're gonna sort of if you're gonna bring them out and leave them out of the fridge for hours then it, they will soften um but they shouldn't melt completely unless it's unless it's particularly hot um and tempering is another thing that I think is, we'll definitely cover in another show. Good, good. Well, here's uh, what I see is um, it's summertime here where I'm at, and those would be great frozen just to bring it out of the freezer and, and eat on the deck <laughs> the chocolate with the berries. That would be Absol awesome. Absolutely. Well, funny enough, Jackie has just put a comment that she freezes her chocks. Um, yeah, so that, would, that would be a way of doing it. Um, absolutely. I mean, and then if you take it out of the freezer and yeah, and then nice frozen berries with some chocolate coating on. Yeah, lovely. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> well, I like that. <laughs> you find a lot of chocolate lovers or wine lovers as well. Wine and chocolate have a tendency to go together. <laughs> and they do, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I just wanted to jump on screen, tell you hi, and you are welcome to join our group on live streaming. We're educating one another, and since you're, you are producing a show, I think you could really benefit from it. Cool. Um, I'm an old-timer on the Facebook group side, and we need to get a permanent name for your group set. You've got so many in there, and you can do that now. So cool. okay. I'll my you how to do that. It's very easy. Excellent. And, we'll, we'll make sure we connect, Bob, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I would say make a recipe book for the people in your group. I mean, get all the recipes together and make it a project for your group. I'd participate. Oh, good idea. <laughs> cool. Excellent. That's a good idea. Excellent. Catch you later. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Bye. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. um, so, Roland, can raw chocolate be poured in liquid form onto ice cream as a sauce? Well, actually, that is one of my favorite things to do. So, yes, is the answer. Um, and I don't know if you may remember there was a, um, a product, I think it was called Ice Magic, which was like a chocolate sauce and a little pyramid -y shaped plastic tub. And you poured that on ice cream and it sort of went into a crust. It works like that. And it is brilliant but it is so much nicer and it just gives you a really beautiful gooey chocolatey coating yeah um sprinkle on some maybe bee pollen and some sprouted buckwheat and bits and pieces like that and oh yeah top good question Roland. i'm back i just went to get some raw chocolate out the freezer um 
<laughs> right, okay. Uh, welcome to everybody who's joined us. If you've got questions, uh, then you can either ask them in text or you can come on air and uh, join Dan and I um, uh, as we're recording at the moment. Um, right, okay. Well. And if not, we've got something to move on to. We have. Oh, yeah. Shall I? Oh, shall, shall, I shall I reveal? Oh, hang on. Roland has just chipped in. Do you have many shapes for your molds? Um, absolutely loads. Um, we've got all sorts of shapes. The, the kit comes with one of two designs, um, but we've got loads of different shapes, and then there's loads of others available online, um, from little sort of chocolate box shapes to chocolate bar molds and all sorts. So, yeah, your, your imagination can run wild. <laughs> right, okay, now. Um, just a minute, I need to, right, okay. Can you see that, Dan? Yep. Okay, we'd like to talk about it. Cause... Okay, so um, a little competition for everyone. I did say in the run-up to this and in the promotion that there'd be a competition. So um, your chance to win one of three raw chocolate making kits. Um, it's a really simple competition. It's just a really simple question. And um, the answer you will find by watching the either the whole video or the the no fail chocolate recipe video, um, and it is simply how many cells were in the chocolate mold in that video. So if you go to the web address, which we will post any second now, um, put in your answer, submit your details, and um, if you're one of the lucky winners, you win a raw chocolate kit. Um, there's only one caveat, and that's unfortunately this time out, it's UK addresses only. So I can only post the kits to a UK address this time around. Um, so sorry for Barb. Sorry about that. Um, uh, speaking of Barb, so this is the sweet is the sweet freedom available in the USA? I don't believe it is, actually. Um, I don't believe it is. People use uh, agave syrup. I'm not hugely keen on that myself. Um, or what else? A raw honey, a really nice raw honey, uh, maple syrup. While they're not as low GI as some of the other things, um, they can be very good. Um, so there's lots of different things you can you can try. Um, so there we go. That's the link okay. to the competition. Right. Uh, closing date is 8 a.m. Wednesday, the 22nd and uh, of June, and we'll announce the winner on the same day or the winners and um if you're one of the lucky winners you'll get a kit sent to you good luck excellent welcome claire and, and colin right okay so you've got the competition link in there uh yep. and basically i wish you all good luck if you're watching the replay can you just say the the date again dan um okay so the expiry the closing date for the competition is wednesday 8 a.m wednesday the 22nd of june um if you go to our facebook page all the details will be on there if you go to our youtube page all the details will be on there if you go to our website all the details will be on there and if you sign up to our email list you'll get lots of information about it as well but before we go i've got one surprise which roland and roland no one knows about stephen doesn't know about roland definitely doesn't know about um, and this is a little bonus that i've um i've come up with and it's uh basically to say thank you to all you wonderful people who have been here for the first episode and joined us live, I'm going to give you a little uh, chance to have a raw chocolate lover t-shirt. Wow. Free. Okay. Yeah. And these I will send anywhere in the world. So all you need to do to be in a chance with getting one of these for free at some point in the next couple of months when we do a print run is share the video on Facebook, add a comment to the video of the recording as well on our YouTube channel. And then by Wednesday the 22nd, I will check, see who's added comments and that sort of thing. Uh, I will also post a link on those pages where you can add your details. And then I will have all your details. And when we do a print run, I will send you a t-shirt to say thank you. That's my surprise. Wonderful. Do, do, do co-presenters qualify? 
<laughs> I think you'll probably that's call it a great, thing, but absolutely. Right. Okay, <laughs> spreading the raw chocolate love around the world uh, because there's no no limits as far as you post anywhere, yeah. Yeah, for the t-shirts, yeah, I can post those anywhere. I, I'm sure if you've got an address in Antarctica, it might take a little while to get to you. Um, but absolutely. So keep an eye on the Facebook page and the the, the YouTube channel and um, uh, put some comments on there and share it. And um, I will make sure that um, uh, a link goes up for you to be able to do that. I did have a link, but I've lost it for some reason. So uh, I will figure that one out and I'll post it to you soon. <laughs> right. Uh, we did play the recipe earlier, but I think we should play it again to give everybody a chance to enter the competition. Yep, a good way to end. Yep. Would you like to close the show, girl? I own it, you close it. No, well, just to say thanks, everyone, for coming along and supporting us. Um, and, uh, yeah, love to hear your feedback and comments. And um, hopefully you can join us all. Oh, in fact, yes, yep. for next show. That's what we should tell them about. Indeed. Good talk. Um, <laughs> uh, I did have the date in front of me and it's gone. Um, it is a month from now. It's the middle Wednesday of July, yep. which makes it Wednesday the, oh, what's that, the 17th of July. Oh, oh. Yep. The, the wonders of live TV, eh? Yep. <laughs> um, no, Wednesday the 13th. 13th of July, seven o'clock. We'll be back here, folks. Come join us. Yeah, we'll <laughs> possibly both be wearing the t shirts and still on <laughs> as well. All in time, <laughs> we come on camera, we can do a group photo for people all wearing the shirts. <laughs> it's, been, it's been our we'll, we'll, thank you, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you on the next show, July 13th. Take care and good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you.